and welcome to our next episode of Tribes. Today, we're joined by Fonz, the founder of Token Proof. Fonz, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, GM. GM, GM. Token Proof provides token gating solutions for online and in real life events. If some of you have been to NFT NYC, you probably saw almost all the parties that were um, ticketing through NFT collectibles being powered through uh, Token Proof. So we're super excited to hear more about what was your journey, Fonts, and how you entered the space. And then we'll jump into how Token Proof came about and what are some of the things that you have planned for later this year. Uh, so I came into the NFT space uh, about a year ago, actually. Um, I believe the first NFT that I bought was probably July of last year, um, 2021. So um, not not one of the OGs uh, that bought crypto kitties or crypto punks back in the day, but uh, you know I, I've been here for about ten NFT years, as we say. Um, and so I, I came into the space because I had just shut down my previous venture that was not successful. We were in the health credential space. We uh, thought that um, you know we would be successful in in trying to reactivate the world's economies by allowing somebody to prove that they've got the COVID vaccine or that they were COVID negative in order to board a plane, uh, things like that. And uh, we developed technology for that, but uh, it was just really hard to to go to market. And so we shut down that venture and then I took a break from work and I had seen NFTs back in January when Beeple had his $69 million sale. And um, I decided to check it out uh, when, when I was taking this break and uh, I've never left. And I just fell in love with the, the, the concept of NFTs, the community, the potential. Um, and I became a full-time degen. So that's, that, and then token proof came like seven months, eight months later. So um, I, I just spent a lot of time just collecting and uh, becoming a part of the community, meeting great people. Yeah. It says token proof unlocks possibilities with a peace of mind. Um, how did you come about launching it after already being in the space? Yeah. So, you know, those months where I was uh, becoming a part of the community and collecting NFTs, I realized that we're all connecting our wallets to different services and we're exposing our tokens every time that we do it. And so, for example, your favorite NFT collection may put out merch, right? And so you have to go to the merch drop site and you have to connect your wallet. And so there's a lot of people that say, why do I need to connect my board ape, for example, uh, when all I wanna do is get a $60 hoodie, there needs to be something better. So that was one piece of it because we all see the scams in the space and people losing their valuable tokens, which is really sad to see. And so that was that was one of the motivations behind it. But also I went to NFT NYC and Ape Fest last year and I realized that the mechanisms for getting into all of these events and proving that you own an NFT were pretty much non-existent. And so uh, at some point in December, I saw a tweet that said, is anybody thinking about how to prove ownership of NFTs in the real world by using QR codes or something like that? And I was like, whoa, like <laughs> what we developed for health credentials could be used for this. And so we pivoted. I uh, put a small team back together from the previous venture. We put together, uh, it was almost an experiment. I told everybody, don't quit your day jobs. This is just going to be like probably a failure, but uh, let's try it out and let's try to make health credential verification into NFT verification. And so that's how Token Proof started. And uh, here we are. The rest is history. And um... that's right. Maybe for people who haven't used token proof so far, um, how does it work in, in simple terms? Yeah, so we have a mobile app. And so the user will uh, download the mobile app. They will connect their wallet um, online just once to us because that's the very first step. We have, to, we, we have to know that you're the real owner of the wallet that you're registering with us. And so you come to us, you connect your wallet once, you sign a message once, and then we pair that registration with the mobile app. And once you've done that, then you can use the mobile app instead of your wallet. And so what does that mean? It means that in the real world, if you're going to an event like ApeFest, if you are going to a retail shop where they give you some discount because you own an NFT, you can show a QR code um, that represents your wallet, right? And so um, 
we also have a scanning application that will scan these QR codes. And that scanning application is going to be configured to look for tokens in your wallet. Um, so I'll, I'll just use ApeFest as, as an example. In the case of Ape, ApeFest, we were looking for a board ape or a mutant ape in your wallet. And so when we scan that QR code, we go to the blockchain in real time to make sure that uh, you are the owner of those tokens, right? Um, and we use animated QR codes so that uh, people can't use screenshots or screen recordings because the uh, QR codes are timestamped and they're only valid for about 10 seconds. So that's real world. And then online, instead of showing a QR code, you'll be presented with a QR code that you'll have to scan using the app and we'll do the token gating um, on the back end. So it, it, it's a way to, to interact and unlock the power of your tokens without actually exposing them. Um, and we're trying to reduce the risk associated with interacting with your tokens. And obviously nobody wants to travel with a ledger or a hot wallet in their phone. And so it's, it's a bit of safety and also a lot of utility that we're bringing to the space. Thanks for sharing that. I can imagine scaling online is one thing, but managing physical events might be quite overwhelming. I actually experienced how the QR code changes at the proof um, at the proof party. I think many people for them it was the first time ever seeing this technology. Um, what are some of the challenges that come together? Like you mentioned, it was about what like eighty events that you facilitated during NFT NYC. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, that was risky. Um, I'll, I'll say that it was a great success, but, uh, you know, supporting 80 events in the matter of four or five days is a lot. And so we were super fortunate that we had really good partners like Proof Collective, for example. I think one thing we learned that, that, that is a challenge is that we need to be very much involved in how the logistics of the event are planned, because sometimes technology could be blamed easily for shortcomings that are not necessarily uh, uh, the technology's fault, right? And so what I mean by that is some events that maybe required, I don't know, four scanning lines, but only had two, and suddenly you have people waiting for a long time, and we don't want token proof to be blamed for that. And so uh, that's, that's one thing that I'll say that we're going to be a little bit more vocal about. Um, and, and, uh, I think the, the challenge, and it's not a token proof challenge, it's the space challenge uh, is that there's still a lot of friction for newcomers to come, uh, into the space and get onboarded. And so, uh, you know, I think in the next year or so, we'll see a lot of, uh, an evolution of that and, and just barriers of, uh, to entry come down because this space is just not going to grow into the mainstream until my mom can buy an NFT without any help, right? Yes. And you, I think you also touched upon this um, very briefly, like your partnership with Proof and also working um, with Merch. How, how is your journey like working with creators? Like, do you experience uh, forms of creative collaboration or what would they look like uh, from your angle? I think there's two camps. There's one set of partners that knows exactly what they want to do and they already have their plans very well defined. Um, and then there's the partners that want to co-create and they ask us for recommendations as to how to enhance the guest's experience, whether it's an event or something else, right? And so we we have a mix. Um, and, and we honestly, we love both. There's times where I'm like, I'm so glad that you have everything like nailed down and you know exactly what you want. And there's other times where we like to um, to to co-create and collaborate in the in the you know use case that uh, they have. Um, but what what's really important is that we need to be sure that, and we need to be conscious that whether it's their event or their e-commerce commerce shop or their Discord, whatever their use case is, this is their baby, and we have to understand that this is the most important thing to them. And so we want to make sure that we put out a quality product and that we have exceptional service to them, right? You mentioned like production companies coming in. I can imagine like they don't have such a vast experience in the space. Is that something you advise them with? Like, or have you already been approached? Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And and especially like during NFT NYC, um, a lot of the NFT communities hired event coordinators and event organizers that are not crypto native, right? And so we had to guide them into like what is an NFT and what does like Ether scan mean and what is a what, what is a wallet and all these things. And so um, it's cool. I love. I really love talking to people that don't know anything about the space because it, it, it. Number one, it's a way to onboard more people, but also it's it's a good way to see if you really understand it in the way that you communicate it. Right. Oftentimes, like the best way of of making sure that you know about this stuff is by talking about it with people that don't know about this stuff. Um, and so I, I I have a lot of fun doing that. And so being in a position where you're in the middle of working with many different projects, maybe people sometimes ask like, Fons, what do you think is the formula for success for these projects? Yeah, and I have no idea. Like there's so many things that are serendipitous in the sense that there's communities that gained a lot of traction just because they had good art, but also good timing or a good roadmap but also good luck and good, like, I think luck is always going to be a part of um, anybody's success. Um, there's obviously really, really good talent in this space. And you also see people with really good talent not have as much success, right? And so I don't, I don't think there's a strict formula, but, but, but the, the one thing that I think we've seen in the space is don't overpromise and don't do this huge roadmap and like try to, be simpler and I think simpler is better and that also applies to token proof right because a lot of people have given us really great reviews about the user experience that is very simple that is not complicated a lot of things are very complicated in web3 and uh, we've been able to simplify and people appreciate that simplification thanks so much for sharing that on a final note I would love to ask you what are some of the plans you know moving forwards what, what would you love to see more of or what, what are you working towards yeah so we're talking to a lot of big brands so uh, if, if you think about it up until now we've only done things with crypto native communities and so now we want to help big brands that are coming into the space uh and you know in, have an ability for them to interact with the holders of these crypto native communities in uh, creative ways. And so I always give the example of what happens if Sephora wants to offer a discount to holders of World of Women or Boss Beauties. And so uh, we can help with that because we know what people are holding in the wallets that they've registered with us. And so if Sephora wants to run a promotion like that, we can send like a push notification to those holders and say, hey, if you walk into a Sephora store in the next five days, you can get 20% off. And then when they go to the store, we can perform that token gating or token verification to make sure that the user still holds the world of women or the boss beauties um, NFT, right? And so things like that is is, is what we're looking at. Um, and, and I think, I am very excited about all these big brands coming into the space. Starbucks uh, announced that they're dropping NFTs. And so I think that's going to be a major catalyst for this to uh, be in the mainstream. Uh, we we just saw Eminem and Snoop Dogg do their thing at the VMAs. And there's still a lot of criticism, right? There's a, still a lot of people in the mainstream that don't understand and don't want what we're doing. But I think it's going to be a process and we're excited to be a part of it. So that that's one piece. And then... The, the other piece is bringing all of this um, infrastructure online so that we can token gate e-commerce. And so maybe because you attended a uh, Madonna concert in the future, you have access, you, you, you get a PO app. And because you got a PO app, because you went to that show, you can get access to a merch shop that is just for people that attended that event. And so things like that is what we want to uh, help creators, help organizations, help big brands um, in. And, and we're really excited about that. Tailored experiences. We're all looking for exactly. And also in gaming, it's a whole new world. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a gamer, but I'm so excited about everything that is happening um, um, on that front. And also like metaverse experiences, right? I think that there's going to be uh, uh, very soon, uh, a world in which 
you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, and the metaverse come, come together and you're able to go to a concert in the metaverse and you're able to um, see a movie with your friends in the metaverse. And so that, that's going to be very interesting. And to top our conversation on an artistic note, uh, maybe some of the works in your wallet, any creatives you would like to highlight? Uh, I love Sarah's script. I love, you know, I, I, I actually don't have the piece anymore, but uh, I love Meridian. Uh, it's a gener generative art uh, piece, of, uh, part of an art blocks uh, drop uh, by Matt Deslauriers and really, really amazing pieces. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a DJ. Um, you know, I love my board ape. I love my cool cats. I love doodles. Um, a lot of community, communities that I'm a part of. I'm really excited about Jenkins the Valet and everything that they've done um, with, uh, you know, their their ape as a derivative work um, and doing all of this with the books and podcasts and everything that they're doing with the writer's room. Super excited about that. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, really great for having you today. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what, what else you have on your plate. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, thank you.